Next we will explain how it was decided to pick vertical movement of the torso as the motion parameter of interest. This will explain the current makeup of the lameness locator sensors and their attachment positions on the horse. When we started to begin looking into developing this subjective method of lameness evaluation as early as the early 1990s, we realized that there were a potentially unlimited number of motion parameters from which to choose. Vertical motion of the torso, vertical motion of the limbs, horizontal movement of the body and limbs, stride length, stride rate, joint angle changes, etc., etc. We did not know which would be most productive in developing an objective method. In addition, there are a number of different ways to analyze each motion signal. One could pick maximum height, for instance, of the foot or head, or the difference in maximum and minimum position, like for calculation of stride length. One could look at area under the curve of a motion signal, which would be sort of determining the overall strength of the signal. Basically, we didn't know what to start to measure and how to start to measure it. So we collaborated with computer engineers. This type of problem is usual for them. This is a data mining problem. They instructed us simply to begin collecting data on as many body positions as possible, on as many lame and sound horses as possible. This is how we collected the data for some years. We marked as many points on the horse's body as possible and collected motion signals from sound horses and lame horses using high-speed cameras and a commercially available kinematic motion analysis system. We did this because we didn't know which signals were best. We then quantified the overall shape of each signal using the technique of wavelet preprocessing, which basically correlates the shape of the signal to a predefined wavelet or shape. This is a good way to simultaneously take into consideration many of a signal's many properties, for instance, maximum amplitude, area under the curve, periodicity, etc. We did this because we didn't know how to measure a single once we actually selected it. We then fed the wavelet coefficients of each signal in groups, along with the known group identification, which would be sound, lame and right, and lame and left, into a multi-layered neural network classifier and adjusted node weights until we could achieve high correct classification. This was not very easy to do and few combinations gave good classification, but a few did. A few signal combinations gave over 95% correct classification. Here is a general summary of the overall results of years of data collection. In general, joint movement did not classify well. Also, X and Y movement of the torso and limbs does not classify well. X movement would be movement from back to front or in the direction of the body's projected motion. Stride with length would be a motion parameter primarily in this direction. Y movement is movement left to right, so for example, the amount of limb abduction or adduction during stance and swing or the left to right movement of the head. By contrast, we achieved highest correct classification, in excess of 95% correct classification, with the smallest number of signals when we combined vertical movement of the head, vertical movement of the pelvis, and vertical movement of the foot. So from this point, we concentrated on studying these signals.